Hello guys, in this video I'm going to do some work on this uh, HP ProBook 6560B. Okay, uh, mainly what needs to be done on this thing, uh, it's missing the hard drive, so I'm going to put uh, this hard drive in. Uh, I bought it without a charger, so separately I needed to buy a charger and obviously a um, uh, main cable for the charger. And uh, yeah, I am going to show you how you can upgrade this laptop, uh, give it a good clean and uh, put Windows 10 actually on it. It has a Windows 7 license, but I want to put Windows 10 on it and activate that Windows 10 with the Windows 7 license because you can still do that at the end of uh, 2018 when I'm filming this video. So the specs mainly, again Windows 7 Pro license, Core i3 uh, 2310M at 2.16 GHz, two slots of DDR3, it has one uh, 4 GB stick in there and uh, that will remain like that, I'm not going to put more RAM because 4 GB at the moment are uh, way plenty, it has an uh, standard SATA laptop hard drive, but as it says here, it's actually missing. That is just the form factor. It has a DVD writer and uh, what not. Everything else, webcam, whatever. So, it seems it's missing hard drive, caddy and screws. I should have some screws. Hopefully they are not the really long type, because I don't have any of those anymore. I've used it on some other laptops. Okay, so to take out the battery, slide this, to push the cover out, slide this, and that's about it, and then the cover slides like this. To upgrade the memory, you have two slots right in here, let me zoom a little bit. I'm going just to take out the lower memory, because only this one is installed, show you its specs if you need them. if my camera actually focuses, hopefully. And to put it back, simply uh, put it an, at an angle in the slot and then push it down. And exactly the same you would do if you want to add another one at the top. Here I think we have the Bluetooth module and here we have the Wi-Fi mod... Uh, Wi-Fi what? Wi-Fi module. And as I can see here, this CPU is upgradable. So you can actually upgrade the CPU in this thing. To do that, from what I see, I think it's quite easy. You undo these four screws and then you might actually need to undo one here. Let me see, do we have one there? Yeah, one there and one in there to take out the cooling out uh, itself out obviously unplug uh, the fan from the motherboard and then uh, simply put your new cpu uh, actually undo the cpu latching mechanism you need to turn turn it around take out the old cpu put the new in then put some thermal paste on it and put everything right back and you are done and you can also add uh, a new uh, card in here. I don't know if this thing actually accepts uh, MSATA hard drives or only other types of cards. As you can see here it has some antennas so it might actually accept a 3G modem or something in this top slot right here because it has two one on top of the other. So as upgrades go this thing is pretty good. So I'm going to put this uh, 160 gig hard drive in, for the purpose of this thing it is enough. And a really weird thing, this together with the caddy, because it, this is missing its caddy, are coming from an... One second. Okay, 
more than one second sorry about that what is this thing from an Acer Aspire 5520 series so uh, yeah because the Acer is uh, a bit too far gone to be repaired at this point I will maybe attempt to repair it at some point but at the moment no way and weird enough this almost fits now it doesn't fit perfectly I think one of the screws will be good the other one is nah, not quite but uh, we should be able to deal with only one but uh, these don't actually fit so I might need to, to take care of them so, be back in a moment. I managed to bend the two pieces of metal that were sticking out so now it's fitting in uh, made some tiny modifications uh, to the holes uh, where the screws go in, in this end so it's unable to, to come out anymore we have two screws here so this end is secure the one with the connector but this one is uh, flapping around because normally it has a screw right here in the middle and obviously this caddy doesn't have it so underneath it there are two spacers like you, you've seen me use them. They were already uh, attached to, the, to this hard drive so I just removed it first and then put them back in another position. And these spacers are actually from a Lenovo laptop and I'm reusing them with some double sided tape on the inside. And this will make sure that uh, the hard drive is sandwiched between the top cover, this one right here and uh, the other two spaces, uh, spacers uh, beneath the hard drive. So this will not be moving anywhere. It cannot slide out and because of this it cannot move like that. So it's all locked in place. So it's uh, reassembled. Hopefully also working. I will plug in the charger now. I didn't even check but this charger might be a bit uh, overkill let's see what is its power 120 watts yeah it's 6.5 amps 18.5 volts 6.5 amps and it has uh, a middle pin I have no idea if you can actually see the middle pin let me try and show it to you so you can see the middle pin right there in the middle obviously let me just check uh, how big of a charger this thing uh, actually needs because again I, I'm thinking this is a bit overkill so it needs a uh, 4.74 amps at 19 volts or a 3.5 at 18.5 volts so yeah, overkill, but uh, the guy that I bought it from uh, sold it at a, the price of a lower power one and it was actually the last one that he had, so yeah, if it's cheap and it's more powerful, well, why not? should be good to go let's give it we had a few seconds of light yep we have light here so I think everything is good but probably you cannot see oh I think you can see it barely so uh, let's try to power this thing on 
and my phone is ringing right at this very moment because why not is this thing powering on hmm I think it is actually powering on but that fan spin I do not like that's the fan spin of uh, something not working and I don't think it's the charger my best guess would be that the memory uh, doesn't make good contact so uh, yeah I think I'm going to to take the call really fast and open this thing up and try to power it once again Okay, so as you could see, this thing does not want to boot up with only that 4 GB stick, but if I add another 2 GB stick, it will boot up and all of it is recognized. Uh, recognized. So, uh, yeah, not very happy about this uh, situation in particular, but I don't have another 4 GB stick, so yeah that's that but i do have uh, two two gigabyte sticks so uh, this is memory for you in a nutshell without uh, any particular reason some memories just do not want to work i will just try it for the last time even in the top slot so maybe it's something to do with the bottom one that but it was in the bottom one and together with this it was uh, working and being recognized but yeah I've seen uh, weirder things while uh, working on computers so I always try every single scenario just to make sure that nothing gets overlooked and behold <laughs> so in the top slot it works even with that stick but it just doesn't want to work in the lower one yeah, I'm just going to try it one last time in the lower one. Maybe, maybe, just maybe we are lucky. But uh, I wouldn't get my hopes high. But again, as you could see, when it, this was in the lower slot and another memory stick in the top one, it actually worked. So, I don't really know what to say. And this one even worked by itself in the lower slot so it's not something that both of them need to be popped yeah so presumably it was just not making good enough contact again that's memory for you when you least expect it it will do something uh, extremely annoying yep 4 gigs four gigs recognized so yep it will remain as is okay so we are inside the bios to get to the bios you press escape when uh, you have the text to press escape and then f10 to enter the bios that's about it i will do my usual uh, bios settings and then i will boot from this USB drive and put a Windows 10 image on this thing. I don't want to install it from scratch. I have a Windows 10 image with every software already installed and all the settings uh, the way I like them. And then I will input the serial key on the back of this laptop to activate uh, that particular Windows 10 copy with a Windows 7 key. Again, at the end of 2018, this is still working. So uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, so we will boot from this USB drive 
power it on, press escape, then press F9 and select the drive that we want and with the AMI I will actually start a Cronis True Image and I will put a, a clone of Windows 10 onto this thing but that will be done in high speed because it does ah come on okay it does take a while Okay, so this is clearly just a matter of luck. I have activated at least two laptops uh, with Windows 7 keys, worked perfectly. Failed one with a Windows 8 key and this one failed with a Windows 7 key. So, yeah, it's, it's just a, a, a question of luck. So what I need to do now is put a Windows 7 clone on this thing and upgrade that Windows 7 to Windows 10 and then it will be activated but that just makes more work for me so yeah let's put that clone Windows 7 started up as you can see uh, it's not activated so right click on computer yeah it's really slow because it's still trying to install drivers and whatnot I will not wait for that I have my software uh, installed restart later whatever I just need to activate this and start the Windows 10 update change product key and I need to input the key that uh, I got from uh, from the case so I will do the activation process in high speed as you can see the activation was successful so all that is great now let's start Chrome and simply search for media creation tool but we will not create a bootable uh, drive we will actually uh, do the upgrade on this particular laptop oh sorry it's so media creation tool first thing that you see is what we need yeah this is in Romanian the first link will be even in uh, English or whatever okay let's go a bit lower yeah, this is still doing tons of stuff in the break background, so it's really, really slow. Download the tool now. It should start to download. Showing folder. And I always like to move it on to the desktop, so I remember to delete it when this thing is finished. So, yep, this is it. Ctrl X, we can close this thing now, Ctrl V, run it, yes, I can close this downloads folder, not usable anymore, and before starting this thing I just want to go to Control Panel, uh, this is obviously not needed for you, but I just want to to change my user folder because now it has the name uh, W7 and I want to change it to W10 obviously change name so Windows 10 will install directly with this user folder so Java is seeing some updates don't really care about that now and uh, I will not film the whole uh, process because I have a ton of videos showing how to upgrade from Windows 7 or Windows 8 to Windows 10. Uh, so yeah, I will just, just film small parts of it and uh, hopefully that's enough for you.
run a disk cleanup on drive C. It's a bit uh, less uh, filled with uh, unneeded things. I think also this folder can actually be deleted. Sometime, sometimes even this cleanup uh, still leaves a few things bef behind. Yeah, doesn't want to let me delete it, so that's about it. Uh, another thing, drivers, I think some of them started to install by themselves. To the ones that didn't, I will try again, update driver and search uh, automatically. We will see if it can find them. And the battery plugged in, not charging at the moment. Uh, it uh, did charge to 100% and I did unplug it. But I think it's uh, set up in such a way that uh, if it doesn't go below a minimum threshold, it does not start charging it once again. So it, it leaves it at that uh, thre threshold, uh, at that level. So I think I'm going to give this thing a, a reboot at this point and deal with the drivers. Finished installing the drivers. Uh, I think Windows 10 was unable to install uh, the driver for the card reader. Uh, I think for the shock sensor from the hard drive and uh, the driver from the fingerprint scanner and that one I actually needed to use the Windows 7 64-bit version because there is no Windows 8 and above version for this particular laptop but that one uh, should be working perfectly as it gave zero error, uh, errors. As you can see here uh, Windows 10 is activated so that is awesome. And uh, the battery at this point says about an hour and 18 minutes at 83% uh, remaining. But this thing is still doing lots of stuff in the background. So I'm sure in real life uh, it will last longer than this. This is doing upgrades in the background. So it is working, the CPU, the hard drive are working, they are not idling and I was searching for drivers, downloading, installing. So I'm thinking two hours, maybe two and a half hours, which is good. Not ideal, but still good and decent. So next, I will shut it down after it finishes a bit of work that it's doing now and give it a really good clean. Ta-da! And it's finished and looking good. And we have a huge charger that uh, that actually, sorry, uh, almost doesn't heat up at all when charging it. Yeah, it's a huge brick, but uh, it is what it is. Better uh, too powerful than too weak. Uh, it says one hour and thirty-three minutes. I actually saw about two hours at one point. All drivers installed, everything running really well, and this laptop is in a pretty good shape. Let me just uh, plug in the charger once again. Let's set the light to 100%, and it's pretty good in my opinion. So, yeah, that's about it, guys, for this video. Thank you very much for watching it, hopefully you've enjoyed it, in which case uh, please give it a like, a like, check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel and as always uh, see you in the next one. And I wasn't able to find the optical drive uh, eject button and I didn't clean the optical drive inside so that will be done off video because I completely forgot. So, once again, thank you for watching and bye.